not just to starve ourselves, but that we may learn self-discipline. And there is nothing new in this. It is not entirely something novel that God Almighty had ordained this system of fasting for the previous uh, religious systems. In Judaism, the, the religion as taught by Moses, fasting was prescribed. In the religion as preached by Jesus Christ, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, fasting was prescribed. And we read in the Christian scriptures, in what is called the New Testament in English, that Jesus Christ, he told his disciples that when you fast, do not fast as the hypocrites do. They do not wash their faces and they do not brush their hair. But when you fast, you must wash your face and brush your hair of a happy countenance that nobody knows that you are fasting because you are fasting for the love of God. So in Islam, this is one of the major principles, pillars of Islam. And the Muslim, he looks forward to this holy month of Ramadan. And the Ramadan of the Muslim, the holy month of fasting, is counted according to a lunar calendar. We in the West, people in the West, we have a Gregorian solar calendar based on the movement of the sun, 365 and a quarter day a year and another 365 and a quarter, and another 365 and a quarter, and at the fourth turn of the earth around the sun, they add a day, which means they have a lunar, they have add what is called in February, they add an extra day. Now, in Islam, Allah bari ta'ala, God in His mercy, what He has done is that by giving us a lunar calendar for working out our days and our counting for our religious festivals. It has made it possible for mankind to have a fair chance of experiencing all the seasons of the year. For example, that if it was a solar calendar, then in the West, for example in England, which is a Western country, not of the southern, of the equator, of the equator in that if Ramadan was around Christmas time in December, like they say the birth of Jesus Christ was in December. They have a white Christmas, means always it is midwinter. In our case, if Ramadan was to come, instead of December, we say Ramadan, then every year, year in and year out, it would have been a, a midwinter for fasting, and people in the south of the equator, it would have been in midsummer, like in my country, South Africa, we would be having midsummer throughout our experience, and the Western man would be having midwinter throughout his experience, and fasting in winter and fasting in summer are not equal. There is a vast difference between these two. Fasting in summer is no doubt more strenuous, it is more tiring, more trying than fasting in winter. Then in winter in the West, they have very, very long days and very, very short nights. Then we have very, very long days and uh, very short days in, in winter and very, very long nights. So in other words, it would be very unfair, very unjust to work on a system of that nature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, in His wisdom, in His mercy, He has given us this lunar calendar for working out this holy month of Ramadan. And we Muslims, we fast from before sunrise to sunset, before dawn, we can have a little breakfast and the whole day from morning, from, from, from sunrise up to sunset, not even a sip of water, no smoking, no sniffing and other normal relationship which might exist between, let's say, the husband and the wife. Even those relationships of uh, satisfying your sexual needs are forbidden. And it is a great discipline. And the only witness to this system of fasting is God Almighty Himself. And we are told in the books of Hadith that Allah Bari Ta'ala, He Himself will reward the faithful, the one who has fasted from His own presence. Because the Muslim has done this for the love of God only. And nobody is a witness to this because in the privacy of one's own home, from the cool refrigerator, he can take out water and he can drink. Who is a witness to that? Nobody except Allah. So with the fear of Allah, the love of Allah, 
this makes the Muslim to obey this pillar of Islam. وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. الحج أشهر معلومات فمن فرض فيهن الحج فلا رفث ولا فسوق ولا جدال في الحج صدق الله صدق الله من النزيم My dear brothers and sisters I have read to you a verse from the Holy Quran from Chapter 2, verse 185, in which Allah Bari Ta'ala tells us about Hajj, that for Hajj, the months are well known, you know the months of Hajj, and when Hajj, the season of Hajj comes along, when one undertakes Hajj, it is the duty of the Haji, the person who performs Hajj, that there is no obscenity, that he performs no obscenity, he doesn't do anything that is outward, untoward, and nor does he do anything wicked, nor does he do any wrangling during the period of Hajj. Now in the Hajj, there are certain signs of Allah Bari Ta'ala, certain duties that one has to perform, and among these duties of Hajj, one is Sa'i, that is, running between Safa and Marwa. These were originally two hillocks, two small hills. And the history goes that Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, the Holy Prophet Abraham, the father of the Jews, the Christians and the Muslims, everybody reveres this messenger of God as Father Abraham, Father Abraham, Father Abraham. Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, he had two wives, Sara and Hajra, and through a conflict that existed between these two wives of his, Allah bari ta'ala commanded him to take Hajra with her infant child Ismail and take him to where Makkah is today and leave mother and child. Outwardly, it was one of the most cruel of deeds that any man can do to his wife and child. A young wife and an infant child. But at the behest of Allah, he was prepared to do anything what Allah commanded him. He was prepared to carry out the commandments of Allah. So he leaves mother and child. And as time wore on, they ran short of water. And Bibi Hajra, she began searching for water looking in this direction, looking in that direction, running up on top of Safa, looking around to see for some oasis or see some habitation, nothing to be seen. She runs down the hillock and runs up onto the opposite hillock, Marwa, and she scans around for some sign of habitation, some oasis, some habitation, some people, and she finds nothing. And she runs up and down and down and up seven times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took such a liking to this compassion, this love that she had for her infant child that he made it far upon the haji, the man who goes on pilgrimage, that he must also go, go through the same process of up and down seven times. Now Allah had a purpose in this, of making us to go through that. As a discipline, as a sign, as a monument of remembering Allah. Then he made Ibrahim, Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, to build the Kaaba. Hazrat Ibrahim and his son, a young man, when Ismail grew up, to say 